Our next speaker is Dr. Charles Fletcher. Dr. Fletcher is chairperson and professor of the Department of Geology and Geophysics in the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Dr. Fletcher teaches graduate and undergraduate courses in physical and coastal geology. Thank you. Um, and thank you, everybody, for coming this afternoon. Uh, the title of my talk, as you can see, is uh, Beaches, First Victims of Global Warming. But that'll be the last thing I address. The majority of the talk is going to be on um, the process of sea level rise. And we hear a lot about this in the press, uh, in the news. And I thought I might try to uh, outline for you what our current understanding of this uh, hazard, this phenomenon is. Uh, go through a little bit of the science and what I think are some of the reliable, uh, the, the reliable uh, state of science today. And then um, show you some scenarios of sea level rise flooding in some, some areas that uh, we frequent day in and day out. And then I'll get to beaches. So first, a little review. Um, new research in the last six months indicates a doubled melting rate of the Greenland ice sheet equivalent to about 57 cubic miles of ice turning into water per year. Net melting of the Antarctic ice sheet equivalent to about 36 cubic miles uh, per year. It was just this year that we uh, finally were able to conclude, and I won't say, um, actually I, I won't call this a conclusive uh, data set, but for the first time the data set looks like it's leaning towards uh, net melting on the Antarctic ice sheet. Prior to this, for the last several years, it's been inconclusive whether the Antar Antarctic melt uh, melting, or whether the Antarctic ice sheet was melting or accreting. Global sea level rise this year has now exceeded 3.4 millimeters per year. And the average rate throughout the 20th century was someplace between uh, 1.5 and 2.0 millimeters per year. So we're definitely seeing an, uh, uh, an increase in the rate of sea level rise. We also know that there's continued heating of the atmosphere. Uh, there's a continued heating of the water column. And I'll uh, show you what I think is the most reliable recent paper on this phenomenon, which I think uh, we should all take to heart as a, uh, a planning horizon, uh, which is about a one meter rise of sea level during the 21st century. If there were a three degree rise in atmospheric temperature uh, this century, that alone suggests a three to six meter rise in sea level during this century, and that's based on geologic, uh, past geologic events in the last um, couple of uh, 100,000 years. So there are still major uncertainties in sea level science, but these latest results are very significant in that they do not point in the direction of smaller rates of rise, and we were uncertain about that throughout much of the 1990s. Uh, they are consistent with the worst case of long-standing predictions of sea level rise, and uh, counter arguments against this grow fewer and fewer. In fact, um, global warming, I think it's now face to say, uh, uh, fair to say is taken as fact. Sea level rise is taken as fact. Uh, if there's any question anymore, it's, it's uh, to what degree are humans involved in this. But um, even that, I think, is a discussion that's, that's largely coming to an end. So here's uh, just a uh, graphic of the Greenland ice loss data. Uh, in pink is the 1992 extent of melting. And in red and pink is the 2005 uh, extent of melting. So you can see there's been an exten uh, extensive increase in the melting area of the Greenland ice sheet. In white, uh, you still have uh, accreting areas of ice, but the, the net result uh, as a single uh, entity is, is net melting. Here's the data uh, extending from 1979 to 2005. You can see it's very noisy data. There's a lot of variability in it, but uh, there's definitely a significant trend uh, indi indicating an increased area of melting. Antarctica. Uh, has only been sampled comprehensively for about five years, and it's a very noisy uh, database. But it is, and you can see by the, uh, by the uncertainty around this rate of 152 cubic kilometers of ice loss per year, plus or minus 80. Uh, so we still need to continue surveying the Antarctic ice sheet on an annual basis and, and really um, further refining our understanding. Every place that you see a plus sign, 
uh, largely on the east Antarctic ice sheet, is an area that is still accreting snow, so there's still net uh, accretion. And uh, the size of the circle around these signs is an indicator of the magnitude of uh, whether it's accumulating or melting. And you can see largely the uh, negative signs are uh, located over in the West Antarctic Ice Sheet, where many of these uh, uh, glacial systems are uh, hinged on the continental shelf. We recently had some good news. Uh, it looks like uh, at least the one glacial system that was studied uh, in this regard, that there is a, uh, an accumulation of sediment known as a ground moraine below this glacier that will prevent it from we think may prevent it from becoming catastrophically unhinged, so that uh, we were worried about uh, catastrophic failure of some of these ice sheets, but now it looks like the geology might be acting to prevent that. So if you were to take sea level rise and divide it up into its components, the two principal components are melting ice, turning it into water that flows into the ocean, and warming the surface of the ocean. And when you warm things, they expand. And so this is called uh, steric expansion or thermal expansion of the ocean surface. And you can see we have a long data set here uh, indicating the uh, increase in sea surface temperatures around the world. Taken all together, the contributions to sea level are actually poorly understood. It would be nice if we could nail down all the contributions to sea level and have a nice budget that would tell us uh, from an observational point of view the components of sea level change add up to such and such, and the actual observations of sea level change add up to something about the same order of magnitude. But we're not able to do that quite yet. If you were to take the alpine glaciers and smaller ice caps of the world and melt them all, they would contribute about a half a meter of sea level rise globally. The Greenland uh, ice sheet is uh, over seven meters. The West Antarctic ice sheet is over five uh, meters. Generally speaking, most of the scientists believe that uh, complete greeting, uh, melting of the Greenland ice sheet is several centuries away, likewise with the West Antarctic. How much sea level rise that we observe today is due to melting ice, r roughly half, we think, and how much is due to thermal expansion uh, because of atmospheric heating, again, roughly half. So here's a... Uh, Here's a record of global temperatures that we have extending back prior to the uh, 20th century. It's a fairly good record. And here's a record of sea level rise, global sea level rise, again, extending back prior to the 20th century. So we have the makings of uh, modeling sea level rise as a function of temperature change. And if temperature change is telling us something about ice melting, then uh, by uh, modeling sea level rise as a function of temperature change, which is done here, um, and then using this model to predict sea level rise based on the IPCC projected uh, heating in the atmosphere that's going to be taking place over this century, we have the, the basis for a prediction of what our future sea level rise will be. And Romsdorf in 2007, uh, in fact, the paper in January in Science did just this. Uh, and so. This is what I think is the most robust understanding of um, sea level rise prediction this century. And using the IPCC uh, different scenarios, he comes up with a um, sea level scenario ranging from half a meter per year to uh, almost one and a half meters per year. So if we accept this, and I, I think it's the state of the science, then I think it's fair to say at present, our understanding is uh, that we may expect as much as a meter of sea level rise this century. So let's take a meter of sea level rise this century. That's mean sea level. Let's, let's add uh, four-tenths of a meter to make it high tide. And let's have it rain like it rained last spring. So then one day we had uh, almost a foot of rain that fell in some areas. And let's take all this water and let's superimpose it on a digital elevation model of some of our coastal areas. We're going to end up with estuaries that lo look like this. Our modern urban estuary is going to be a place where during heavy rainfall, the runoff can't drain out back into the ocean because our storm sewers are backed up. And sea level rise is forcing the groundwater table to rise and crop out on the land surface. So what was dry land uh, is going to turn into wetland, especially during intense rainfall. And this picture, you're probably familiar, takes place all the time uh, in Mapuna Puna. In fact, they don't even need the rain. Currently in Mapuna Puna, the industrial district down by the airport, uh, 
twice a month at spring high tide, there are storm sewers back up and they have salt water in the streets. Okay, so here's Campbell Industrial Park uh, and we are now flooding Campbell Industrial Park with the, that scenario of rain and sea level rise and you can see the areas blue are flooded and within this blue area is one of the two gasoline refineries that we have for the entire state of Hawaii. Here we have uh, Sand Island in downtown Honolulu and some very dramatic flooding takes place there. I should mention to you that the um, precision of the DEM that's being flooded here is about um, 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters. So it's a very precise DEM on which we've overlaid an aerial photograph. And you can see our major uh, uh, waste processing plant on Sand Island is going to be flooded as well as much, as the, uh, much of the Ala Moana area. And Waikiki, even more dramatic, we have a uh, very serious flooding that takes place there. Okay, so we know this. I think now is the time for management to start addressing this uh, and, and considering the various options. Another thing that takes place though when sea level rise rises is that waves penetrate further landward and coastal erosion increases. And here's uh, a typical, typical seasonal wave that we get uh, occurring. And we've been able to model this process of wave inundation and coastal erosion under one meter of sea level rise. So the, the growing black area is coastal erosion and the, uh, the blue area is our annual high wave. The green area is our five year average high wave. Yellow is the 10 year average high wave and the uh, red is our 25 year wave inundation plane. So this is just a, a DEM that we took from Waimanalo showing again this, this uh, high wave inundation that takes place, something else that we need to be very aware of. Okay, I'm nearly finished and the topic of this talk originally was beaches, but I think the answer is what beaches? When we raise sea level this high, are we going to allow our coastal highways, our uh, infrastructure, our communities to get uh, simply washed into the ocean? Uh, historically, Hawaii has not allowed this to happen. With about one meter of sea level rise, most of the Hawaiian shoreline will look like this, and I don't think there'll be any beaches. Will this impact tourism? Will this impact our, uh, the mainstay of our economy? Surprisingly, my answer to this is no, I don't think it will, because I think our tourists are already being uh, seduced away from the beaches. In fact, if you look at this pool complex, this is typical of many of our resorts. You can't actually get to the beach from the cool pool complex very easily. They've built this thick naupaka hedge and uh, they're not encouraging you to go to the beach. Uh, you sit by the pool, you get the ocean experience, you get the coastal experience, uh, but the beach at that location actually disappeared already. They haven't seen any drop in, uh, in visitors. So where, where do our beaches come from? <laughs> we're building beaches in the resorts and uh, we're compensating. Okay, my last point is who loses out? the locals lose. We who live here lose because we don't go to the resorts to experience the pools and the beaches. Uh, we like to go to the, the prototype itself. We like to go to the beach itself. Thank you very much. <laughs>